إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه قال الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذي من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فهوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as usual and as always we praise him, we seek his assistance, and we seek his forgiveness, and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil that resides within our own selves and from the bad consequences of our own deeds. Whomsoever Allah has guided, no one can lead that person astray. And whomsoever Allah has left due to their own desire to be left, none can guide them after Allah has abandoned them. We bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship besides Allah, he is wahda, he is one, unique in his oneness, complete in his perfection and incomparable to his creation. And we further bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu is his last and final messenger. A long line of a plethora of prophets and a multitude of messengers ending with Muhammad sallallahu it all started on the first of Shawwal, 1442, we were saying goodbye. And our best friend was leaving us, but it appears that in the month of Shawwal, Ramadan extends its stays for a few more days. You had six days to experience a glimpse of your best friend as they went off into the month of Shawwal. And we stood, fa we stood fast in the month of Shawwal, went on to Dhul Qa'dah and worshipped Allah in Dhul Hijjah, started a new year in Muharram. We went on into Safar. Of course, Rabbi Al Awwal, Rabbi Al Thani, Jamaat Al Ula, Jamaat Al Thani, Jamaat Al Akhra, the group of four, which comes in a group of two, MashaAllah. 
Rajab, and now we are sailing towards the end of Sha'aban. And for those who decide to march forward with their April foolery, may we welcome the beautiful and blessed month of Ramadan. A friend that we've been missing for 11 months now. A friend that comes once a year by the permission of Allah, bringing numerous blessings that we can't count. This is the month of mercy. This is the month of blessings and this is the most wonderful time of the year, the glorious month of Ramadan. And I wanted to kind of set the stage for you and lay the foundations for you, inshallah. There are going to be brothers up here who are going to talk about the rules of fasting and the fiqh of it. And that's, that's great. And they're more qualified than I to do that. But I wanted to move your hearts a bit. And I wanted to give you a bit of a Ramadan reset list, inshallah ta'ala. And I know that I'm going to miss some things and you could add in things of your own if you want. But this is mine and it starts with... Why? Why? This is a question that growing up in this country you ask a lot. Why? Someone comes to you and asks you, Akhi, why do you fast? And if they're rude, they'll say, why do you starve yourself for a month every year? And there's going to be a number of answers from the Muslim Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're going to range from we want to feel what poor people feel, which is silly. I don't, I don't know necessarily if I like that as a single answer. That's part of it, and I'll deal with that later. I think that it's better for us to feed the poor people, and then they can feel what we feel, as opposed to them and us both starving. But that's neither here nor there. Um, we will say we do it so that, oh, it's healthy, which may be true. Both of these may be true, by the way. It's not to say that they're wrong. I just, I'm not in favor of the other one. Losing weight. Everyone wants to lose weight now. They got all these different things, but why? O oh, you, oh, oh, you who have believed. You notice how the ayat is the ayat of the Aslam. Ya you are the one who is 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 the this is the first reason, so let's start with that, inshallah. A clean and clear intention. We are fasting first and foremost for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if someone asks you, brother, don't be shy to say that. Don't say things like, this is our Christmas. Or this is the Muslim Lent. Equating uh, the fasting of others with our fasting that has been sent down to us by Allah through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is how we fast. We fast to gain the mercy of Allah, to gain the pleasure of Allah and the closeness to Allah. All those other things, feeling a bit of, of, of pressure and, and, and losing weight and all those, mashallah. That may very well happen, but let's start with a clear and clean intention for the sake of Allah and none other. Doesn't matter what the family is doing, doesn't matter what the spouse is doing or not doing, what your soon-to-be spouse is doing, what your used-to-be or want-to-be spouse is doing. You fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And may Allah allow us all to have mukhlis in our deen and in our fasting. Secondly, who are you fasting for? So Abu Hafsa, the Malik, you sound kind of silly. We already talked about that. I didn't. I talked about your intention. So now that we establish that we're fasting for the sake of Allah, let's use this month to get to know the one who we are fasting for. Have you ever actually like sat and pondered on the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Incredible, beautiful names of Allah jalla wa ala. 
هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم That he is Allah That there is nothing worthy of worship besides him عالم الغيب والشهادة The knower of the unseen and the testified هو الرحمن الرحيم And he is the off-forgiving and the merciful, the most merciful. Subhanallah. When you pray to the one who is the controller of time, when you pray to the one who put the sun in its place and who caused the seas to move, when you pray to the one who gave you life and will cause you to die someday, then you know the one who is Allah Jalla wa'ala. And to learn about him, to make it a point this month to focus on him subhanahu wa ta'ala you would have no choice but to fall head over heels in love with those beautiful names and to get closer to your lord wa idha sa'alaka 'ibadi 'anni fa inni qareeb ujibu da'wata ad-da'i idha da'an falyastajibu li wal yu'minu bi la'allahum yarshudun that when they ask about me, Allah is saying that to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I am near to them. And that brings me to the next part, patience. Patience. Been locked up for a little while. And if you want to develop your patience, this is the month to do it, inshaAllah ta'ala. But one of the things that affects our patience is our ability to frame things. You know, we have this, Fear of things, don't we? Anxiety and stress, and may Allah help us all with that. Mental unwellness is, is incredibly real, and, and may Allah help us with that. But I wanted to frame something for you. Your life here is but one of the existences that you have. And it started, of course, in Dar al-Arwah, when Allah had created us and created Adam and asked us, um, am I not your Lord? And we testified that he was. And then we stayed there until we came into the wombs of our mom. And then we stayed there for nine months or so until we came out here, which is the third place. And you're going to stay here for 60 or 70 years, maybe 100. But as we found out that no matter how nice the Hollywood actress is, that she doesn't even get to be 100 if Allah doesn't will it. So you're only going to be here for nine months with your mom and then maybe 100 years outside of here. But you spent all this time in Dar al-Arwah, you'll spend all this time in Al-Barzakh after here, and you'll spend 50,000 years on the Day of Judgment, and then, insha'Allah, you'll be in the Jannah. So we worry about here a lot, because our problems here seem like mountains. But if you compare it to what I just said, to the eons and eons of time you spent in Dar al-Arwah, to the nine months, very short time that you spent in, in, in the womb, to the 60 or 70 years you spent here, is very short. And may Allah allow us all to develop our patience during this incredible month of Ramadan and to frame things properly. Your existence is not small like this. Not, it's not contained to this 70 or 80 years. Your existence is wide. And it will eventually lead us bi idhnillahi ta'ala. Of course, kulli nafsin dha'iqatul mawt. I didn't say that. But eventually, you'll lead just us bi idhnillahi ta'ala into the Jannah. Be patient, akhi. Be patient, ya ukhti. Be patient. Because this life is incredibly short. And those who missed, uh, who, who, who departed Ramadan last year in the month of Shawwal, some of them aren't here now. Rahmatullahi alayhi wa Some of them are not here right now. But you're here at the doorsteps of Ramadan. So be patient. Get to know the Quran. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran Hudan lil-nasi wal-bayinati min al-huda wal-furqan This is the month in which Allah spoke to us. Can you imagine, Allah, Jalla wa'ala, 
speaking to you in this month of Ramadan, sending his message through his through Jibreel alayhi salam, through his Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam and preserving it until now so that you can open up and read it. And this is the month in which it was revealed. And I know we're going to have fun in the month of Ramadan. And you should. You should have fun with your kids and you should enjoy with them, inshallah. And with your families. But know that that shouldn't be the only thing. Let it be some balance. Learn about the Book of Allah. Learn that this is an incredible kitab. Those who know it, know what I'm saying. And the sweetness of Ramadan is when you get to read this book. Yes, have fun. Enjoy yourself, inshallah ta'ala. But know that this is, the, this is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed and everything is multiplied this month. Which brings me to my next point, be generous. I know Muslims are known for our generosity. Globally, mashallah. And as Allah is most generous with you this month, and as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most generous in this month, also be more generous in this month. Do a little bit more. And Allah knows what generous means to you. It may mean $10, mashallah. If that's what generosity is to you is $10, then do that. Do maybe 12 this month, do 15 this month. If generosity to you is $10,000, then do more than that. If generosity with you is lo bishaq tamar then, then maybe do a whole tamar. Do a bit more, be more generous this month. And Allah knows your capabilities and Allah knows your disadvantages and Allah knows all those things. Be generous anyway. And may Allah increase us all and give us more. Because the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was the most generous during this month more than all the other months. Get to know one another. You know there's places all over the city that have iftars every day. The Caribbean brothers over at Talimul Islam where I used to work, mashallah. They have it every day. The brothers at the Turkish Masjid in Anatolia have it every day. I think here they, they might have something. I'm not sure because I've always been traveling in Ramadan. This is my first Ramadan actually in this masjid. So I'm sure they have something. But go ahead and learn about your brothers. Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqunakum min dhakarim wa untha wa ja'annakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum inna allaha alimul khabir Get to know your brothers and sisters. Go ahead and meet them. The Nigerian brothers and sisters have iftars all over the, in, their, in their place too. MashaAllah, go and have some fufu with them and sit and have some rice with them and some chicken with them. Go meet your Desi brothers and sisters, your Arab brothers and sisters, if there's converts, meet them. Enjoy yourself, inshaAllah, during this month of Ramadan. Go and see people. Yes, it is the month of Ibadah, the month of Quran, the month of all these things. And it's also the month of generosity. And it's also the month of getting to know each other and smiling with each other. We shouldn't behave like enemies, inshallah. Let's get to know each other and enjoy our, our, each other's company. وذلك ما عندي وصلوات الرحمن والسلام هو عليه يقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ولي ولكم ونسأل الله تعالى توفيقا وسلامات. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. قال عبد الملك. I'm all alone. I don't have a family in Ramadan, Malik. I'm a new Muslim. I'm a student. How do you expect me to do all these things? You want me to go meet people? You want me to go run around? I'm all by myself. What if they laugh at me? What if they make fun of me? If you are celebrating alone, we ask Allah Ta'ala to enrich you with company better than what you have now in a place far better than this. You know, one of the things that I could relate to in that is that I used to spend a lot of Ramadans alone. Especially as a new Muslim, I remember spending Ramadan alone and I remember boiling potatoes and eating them with salt and butter. <laughs> and that was what I had. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. So I'm speaking to you from a place of experience when I've experienced many Ramadans, all alone. Eid, MashaAllah, that's what happens sometimes. And to help me with that, I would frame it in such a way that I would say that maybe, just maybe, Allah Ta'ala wants to see my worship without anybody else watching me. <laughs> to worship Allah 
alone or by yourself I should say is what Ibrahim salam did for many years and he was considered an ummah to worship Allah by yourself is what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do when he used to go into the cave of Hira and stay there for days. I know that it's not nice to be by yourself, but you're never alone. You're never actually alone. So if you do have to celebrate and fast alone this month of Ramadan, know for a fact that you're not actually alone, even though you are by yourself. I'm praying for you. Hibbukum fillah and jazakum Allah wa kullu khayran. May Allah allow us all to maximize our benefit this month and to maximize the blessings in this month. And if we do have to meet him in this month of Ramadan, may we be one of those amongst those people who Allah saves from the hellfire. Because wallah, ya akhi, that place, we don't want to ever see that. And may Allah allow us all to never enter it. Inna Allahu malaikatahu yusallu ala nabi. Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wa baraka ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إننا أسألك بأسماك الحسنى وصفاتك العلى أغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتقبل صيامنا وقيامنا وصلواتنا وزكاتنا في رمضان نسأل الله تعالى نسأل الله تعالى عافية والمعافاة في الدنيا وفي الآخرة إنه لا يفعل ذلك إلا أنت أنت الله لا إله إلا أنت وصلوات الله وسلامه على حبيبك محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قوموا إلى صلاتكم رحمكم الله.